people inside that isolation chamber, well, only made I, for two. What they need to see, if I mean, if they can make it happen now, is whether or not this game is salvageable. Like, yeah. What do you do in a situation like that where well, you're not able to pause? Thankfully, since they are on the same team, I have a like. I imagine like they're going to be okay if the game does decide to get restarted. At least there's not going to be major drama. Like Chef's not going to go on Reddit and be like, "Oh, I can't believe they did this stupid Red Bull." Like we have seen in the past. <laughs> not from him though. He's like way too nice for that. But um, one time I did see Chef. It was at an MLG, and um, it was at basically closing time, and I was hanging out afterwards because mm -hmm. our casts were done. The players were just wrapping up their games. And there or was, because, or because you work so much and you're such a hard worker. I'm just That's so dedicated that I only leave when they kick me out. But there was a game I can't remember who he was playing, but it was a ZBZ. And right when a Baneling ran into the mineral line, it was a, a couple of frames away from detonating and killing all the drones. And uh, the game froze, and then it counted down for like a little bit, and then it unfroze, and then all of his drones died. And Sheth managed to say so cool about it. He was like. You know, this really sucks because it was the game deciding. It does look like they are going to go ahead and remake the game, actually. Um, and looking at both the players, Sheth didn't seem visibly frustrated with that. Tasia, I don't think, really cares. He's just here to play his games and, um, you know, get it taken care of. So I, I think there's not going to be a lot of drama. No. I mean, no matter how you look at it, it's they're, they're, they both go home winners because one of them ends up. Actually, well, I was going to say because one of them ends up getting through, but they still have another game that they'll have to play. Yeah. This is like an emotional roller coaster for them, man. Um, hopefully for Sheth, his keyboard and everything, his mouse will continue to work. And uh, I'll have to keep my eyes out. If I see Sheth deciding that he wants to have zero APM from here on out, then his keyboard is probably messed up once again. And um, we're just going to go ahead and change the player's colors. And then we are going to start this for the third time. But this is still going to be game number one. Hopefully Sheth's equipment is going to hang on and continue forward. Um, at least has to survive one more best of three, Rob, as yes. th this could be his last best of three if he ends up losing. Just one more best of three. This is Once again, for the third time, we are going to be going into game number, number one, one between Liquid Tasia and Liquid Chef on Cloud Kingdom LE. It is counting down. The loading has begun. We'll see if they have the same spawns for the third time in the row, and oh, they do. It was meant to be. This it is true. It was meant to be. It was all in the plan. So once again, down here, lower left-hand corner, this is Tasia. His teammate and opponent, also from Team Liquid, this is Chef. I'm just imagining that one imaginary guy we we're talking about who's buying a drink for every every player, and he's had to buy three drinks for the same for game. This. Just <laughs> just avoid the alcohol poisoning, guys. I would say give a cheer and buy a beer, but you've probably done that three times already. So uh, definitely be careful with that one. And I just want to say a huge thanks to everyone watching, and a lot of people have been tweeting at me. I'm at Husky Starcraft. What's your Twitter again? I always forget. At Rob. P. Simpson. Rob P. Simpson. Thank you guys so much for the support. I know there has been some sound issues. There has been um, some hardware issues as well. But uh, thank you for staying true, sticking around. And I am really excited about tomorrow. We're going to be seeing Stefano play for sure. He's going to have a great seed because of his 3-0 victory. And I'm curious to see how Last Shadow performs. Um, yes. I think he's been like the big you know, dark horse. And also, not only that, but it's very rare that a player is unknown completely. Like, he hasn't been to a tournament. I think, what was the last one you said? Since, like, uh, it was Dow last year's Dallas yeah, like or something like that? Or Raleigh? Ago. It might have been last year's Raleigh. I don't, it was one of the first MLGs. Yeah, exactly. And then he, like, went to Korea. Yeah, exactly. And he has had a uh, quite the struggle there with the, the injuries and everything that he's endured. But uh, regardless, both these players so far are playing it out exactly the same way that they did in the last game. We do see Chef. He may be going for a hatchery first here. And I almost wonder if these players told each other, look, I know you expanded first last game. Let's just do it again. Don't do any cheese ball things to try and take advantage of the fact that we've restarted this. And let's just try and get back to where we were. Um, the only difference I would see from Sheth is maybe not taking a third before that four minute mark like we saw in the last game and instead relying on a two base play. But uh, we'll see. Although on the other hand, I mean, he could just go for it again. He was probably pretty comfortable about that position. He already had his six drones out there. Yeah, and he was in true. a pretty good spot to harass those Marines. Yeah. I mean, it looked like Tejal was almost guaranteed to finish off the bunker. Mm -hmm. But the drones would have but also intercepted the Marines. But the drones probably would have like killed the Marines. Yeah, yeah, and drones are actually, I mean, they're a pretty big unit when you compare them to a Marine. So a Marine oh, actually yeah. has a hard time walking around them, which is something that's kind of silly to say. But you got to remember that the, the pathfinding in StarCraft 2 is so good that those drones, they're going to surround you as quick as possible. Like, they that's why you see in StarCraft 2 a lot more drones just going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, I... Looks like this drone actually got a kill over there while we're all yammering on. So he's going to be delaying this expansion um, just a little bit, trying to harass this SCV as well. And Chef making it a little bit different already. 
Yeah, Chef's getting out there, staying very active with his drone. A, a really clever move, actually. Very nice to see. Chef is waiting just for that spawning pool to finish up, and then he's going to add on a queen. Possibly a, a couple lings, most likely just, just drones, those we see him using all of his larvae repeatedly. And there he falls up with both of his queens. And now we're going to wait for the moment of truth. Is he going to go for that third base once again? Yeah, I'm curious to see if he does. It would be delayed. I don't think he's going to be going for that base because he is getting double queen. Uh, he's going to be getting out a couple of links here to make sure to have that map control. And don't worry, this huge spike in supply is only because double queen. Um, really, I mean, what does a Terran player have that they can make two of that take two supply at this point? Nothing. It does look like, though, Teja is going to be landing these barracks right here at this location um, to kind of wall this off. That's going to be great for him to hold off any sort of early timings there. And I, I just want to say, I think that this was a good idea for Chef because, I mean, if you think of it in Teja's perspective, he's going to know that if Chef takes a third base, the timing of when the drones are going to get down there and how Chef is going to react. Um, so I, I like that Chef took the initiative, decided to change his build just a little bit, and I'm curious to see what he transitions into. So Teja, with his scout, was able to get up into Chef's main, but he was not able to get within range of the extractor. So he still isn't sure if Chef's added on any amount of gas just yet. Of course, as soon as he was able to kill that scout, we then saw Chef add on both of his extractors, one at the main and one down at the natural. Now we do see Chef indeed finishing up that extractor right there. And uh, Teja is going to be doing a complete wall-in with these barracks. Now we mentioned the uh, the add-ons there. They're going to go down the third base right now for Chef. We mentioned the add-ons, so if Teja decides to put on add-ons, they are not inside his base. Instead, they are on the outside of his base, which does make it easier for Roaches, even Mutalisks, to snipe those very valuable add-ons. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Teja not even do any add-ons. Instead, just rely on the three barracks for defense here. He is going to be throwing down a bunker as well, but the Overlord has seen everything. <laughs> yes, he most certainly already has. Now, there's only a few of these racks out here. Now, he's adding on the tech lab right there, right oh, within is. vision of that Overlord. So, ah. Chef is going to know exactly what's happening. But is this or is just this kind of trick? silly, or is he going? Is it indeed a trap? Although, tech labs, they build in like two seconds. So, I can't imagine how that would be a, uh, a trick by any means. He may begin doing an add on right now, or not the add on, but the upgrades. Oh, he goes for a very fast combat shield here which uh, Combat Shield's such a strong upgrade in the TVZ because uh, really, I mean, you see a lot of Marines versus a lot of Zerglings, a lot of low tier units being used to engage each other. So getting out that Combat Shield is huge. A lot of times though, you will see Stim Pack first, but not today. Now we see Chef, he also just wrapped up two of his Evo Chambers now as he starts his double upgrade. So he's gonna be upgrading his melee attack and the ground carapace level one. And we see his metabolic boost is just about to finish up. So he could very well have some pretty sick map control. Now Tejaw did finish up that third command center that he had down at the main. It is now all ready into an orbital command. He's gonna start floating it up potentially over to that third position. And now we see Chef going up to his lair right behind this worm most certainly going to see his infamous Infestor link play. We did see that the Overlord sacrificing itself for the greater good. Wasn't able to spot a whole lot. I'm curious, did he actually manage to spot the double engineering base? No, he did not. That's going to be a big tell on exactly what his opponent is doing because that's going to eliminate some builds like mass air units. It's going to limit, uh, eliminate some builds like a mass factory play, for example, which Mech is a great, great build versus Zerg. We see a lot of players utilizing that. I would say that more often than not, though, we see mostly pure marine and siege tank. But, uh, you know, Sheth would love to be able to count out some of the builds that Teja could potentially do here. And we've got Sheth now closing in with some of those links. He's getting it over here and see that, like, barracks wall and probably not be able to make it too far. Although that tech lab is so exposed over there now, is Sheth going to be able to stay in there? Is it going to be worth it to him to stay in and potentially stop that upgrade? Now, wow. worst case, oh man, only wow. six seconds remaining, three seconds, and he counts down. down. Oh, and the tech lab goes down. I do want to say, though, that Sheth threw away a lot of Zerglings for that. Yes. And um, I, I'm really curious. I, I don't know the reasoning behind this, and I'm, I'm genuinely curious. You can see 19 units have been killed. Um, but I, I wonder why he didn't put it right here, because then he could have Marines on the high ground as well, shooting and protecting that even better. I, I'm curious as to why he didn't do that. But at the same time, he only had a couple of seconds started on that stim pack research that it wasn't delayed by all that much. Right, the biggest the biggest delay there was that the tech lab died. Right. So he just had to remake that. Although, I mean, really, he's not too far behind anyway. I think that he's going to be able to buy enough time here that he'll be able to finish it when he wanted to. At the same time, I mean, Sheth is buying a little bit of time to get out those investors. He, he mentioned in the interview, you know, he doesn't really like going for Mutalists. We do see him expanding once again, and the Zerglings try to poke in there, but that, that's not some friendly house guests you want to run into. 
So we've got Tayshaun now adding on three reactors. So he is really just pumping out so many Marines. We do see the factory is now out in play. We also have him. Ah, yes, he has just started his medevac production to back up all of those, that, that massive infantry army. And the way that Tage is playing this out, he's not really relying on a pure timing attack in the early or the early mid game because look at this. He's using these 1 1 upgrades to safely secure a third base, and the Overseer is going to spot this chest. I don't think you want to engage right here. He is going to go for it, but the Marines are in a great spot, backed into it against the corner. That does mean they will not get completely surrounded. SCVs joining in the battle as well. Is this going to be cost effective oh. for Chef? They are tied in the upgrades, and he will, I think, kill the majority of these Marines, if not all of them. Yeah, Chef's going to get in there and deal a whole lot of damage. He's also lost, we've seen that Tayshaw has lost a significant amount of SCVs here as well. And yeah. now we also have those links continuing to follow in and continue their assault. There we go, those units, the workers killed for Chef, continues to climb. There's just not a whole lot of Marines over there, but the Medivacs have now joined the fight. And there we have Chef going in to surround a few more of those Marines without the Medivacs in range. Now, I love this bunker positioning. I feel like bunkers behind the mineral line are something that are completely underutilized, because look, it's actually protecting the command center from getting surrounded. It's protecting all these units so they can continue to mine here. And uh, Chef, you can see, just melee units, they have really bad pathing when it comes to trying to get us around here, because they simply can't do it. They can't do the damage they need to. They do, once again, back these units into a corner. Can Chef bust down this wall? I don't think he's going to be able to kill it. He realizes he's going to back out. During this, though, the six investors are about halfway done. They are going to have passing glance. Puts those Zerglings on hold position, and he will force the lift off at this uh, third base. Oh, wow. He's also getting just so many SCV kills here as well, and now this is probably going to trigger him. Now that he's killed the majority of his work, right. trigger him to now take down that bunker and kill those last couple Marines. Now, Sheth has continued being cost-effective here, and he is going to go ahead and back out of there. This is the decision-making you have to have as a Zerg player. You can't throw away the additional links. You just need to get on out of there. And, uh, you know, once you've done your damage, get in, get out. That's exactly what you have to do. And now Tasia is stuck, I believe, on pure Marine. And, yeah, it's 40 Marines versus 6 Infestors, 67 Zerglings. Now, it does look like Sheth has decided to do a big wave of drones. Is he going to engage this here? I don't know if that's a good idea. He does realize I need to get out of there. But look at this once again, Rob. His hive tech is nearly done. Oh, wow. And now we actually see Chef is also very well positioned with those investors. Is he going to be one. able to land one of those hookers? Like, huge fungal goes down on the Marines and all of the medevacs out there. Is he going to be able to keep them locked down long enough to finish them off? Oh, there are just too many medevacs, and all of the lings have now died. Wow, the fungal growth. I mean, they, they did whittle down that army to about half its size, but with the amount of medevacs here, they were actually able to keep a surprising amount of Marines alive. Another fungal could go down. The medevacs, though, promptly getting back to healing, and Sheth is not being as cost-effective as he would like. You can see that the units lost has evened up here a little bit, and these Marines, I mean, ma Marines... Hero usually, Marines, yeah, man. Yeah, they do these not usually Marines survive. These Marines have lived, Mike. They have. They don't usually survive that many fungals, but uh, it looks like Tasia, since he has so many medevacs, he's actually going to be able to pressure this fourth base here. Yeah, now we see Chef just getting ready to go down there, but there's not that much energy left on these testers. Now he has, we, wow, Taija with a beautiful wow. spread there. And we can see all of those infested Terrans. Now, is this something that Taija wants to continue to engage in? There we see just so many of those infested what? Terrans going down. Oh, no. They're, all of those infestors are pretty much out of energy. They're now entirely undefended. And Chef has just lost that fourth. What? Do Taija units just not die? They already have the 2-2 two, two upgrades. And I thought for sure that was going to get cleaned up by all those infested Terrans that he just threw out. But his units actually didn't die, or hardly at all there. You can see he pulled ahead by about 1,300 resources lost. Sheth is going to go for the counterattack. If he can punish this undefended base, then he should be able to uh, pull back in this. But it's not undefended, swinging down the reinforcements here. And uh, this is... This is surprising how far ahead Tasia just pulled right now. Well, I mean, he, he got in, he got in onto that fourth. Sheth was forced to put his units into a pretty rough spot, and Tasia just did such a good job spreading out his units and then eliminating the threat of those infested Terrans. And now we see him now just crushing through, going to take down the third. I cannot believe what we were seeing. I thought for sure Sheth was going to be able to do some damage to this army, but Tasia has managed to reinforce it enough that not only is his third base completely defended, he's able to secure a fourth. He's locked down two bases. He may just full on retreat here because he's killed two bases of Sheth. All Sheth is going to have left is a, basically an all in desperation defense here with the Banelings. That's exactly what Sheth is doing, but uh, he's not going to be able to do enough damage with this army, I don't think.
Well, he's going to push forward and give it a shot. We see him now moving down towards the lower right-hand corner of the map there, bringing, oh, just a little bit pausing for a split second. Although his army got watchtower. split up here. Yes. I don't know why. He may be able to do a lot of damage here, though. And blood. unfortunately, I don't think uh, Sheth realized exactly what happened there. And Teja will regroup his army. There is an attack swinging around on the right side. Teja's going to be like, oh, you don't have a base over here either. This is looking really good for me, actually. So at this point in the game, we just see more and more Zerglings being killed. A max out Teja at the 17-minute mark, even though he took a lot of damage on that third base. Just showing us the powerful macro of Teja. He can completely afford to lose these units. Right now, so as we see Sheth start to build a few of his Ultralists and start to, to mount his comeback, we also see Teja is getting up to Seeker Missiles. And he's going to have a, such a high Raven count, and those Seeker missiles are going to be able to connect because those Ultras have to get so close to really get into the fight. Yeah, an Ultralist is not going to be running away from a Seeker missile by any means. Now, the Seeker missile is mostly based on splash damage, so that means that the Ultras aren't going to be taking a ton of damage. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it, it's still a great spell to use versus Zerg. We've been mentioning it where Terran players are learning to use Seeker missiles a lot more, and that's exactly what we've seen in uh, the most recent Sheth games where we do see both of the, the Terran opponents using that. And the uh, one medevac up here just chilling out, not going to be able to do a whole lot. One Marine on the right side denying that base. So Sheth, he has managed to secure that third base again. And the fourth base is now done, but Tage's timing may be good enough just to lock this down. Now, even though that he has all of those bases, he has only barely recovered the lost drones there because he's still at just about... He's, oh, well, now he actually just took a very small drone count lead over his teammate and opponent, Tasia. Oh, man, and now Sheth going in, getting ready to try to break through this line. He's now got the Ultralist wow. with him. We see the Fungals being landed as well. The Lings are trying to get in there and seal the deal. Now, the Ultralists do close a bit of that gap, but Tejah is just still looking good. He's got a significant enough supply lead that he can really continue to lose this as he continues his production and also follows up with more Ravens. Yeah, now killing off those medevacs is going to be vital here. He needs to kill them off as best mm -hmm. as he possibly can. Um, <clears throat> that battle was very good here for Sheth, but he's still behind in the supply. Yes, he does have the Ultras, but his opponent has begun mass-producing out those Marauders. And also, the control there for Teja, having that perfect concave was just amazing, absolutely outstanding. Not a lot he could do because he didn't have much anti-Ultra there, but he's just shown us top control throughout this game so far. I would expect to see the exact same thing. The Ravens are now here. There's that magical five Raven count. And you know what? Why not throw in a battle cruiser? Oh, wow. I am so happy that we're seeing a battle cruiser in this game. I wonder if he's going to continue production. As we can see, he actually still has a little bit of a ceiling remaining to continue to cap out there. And he certainly has enough star ports to finish this up. We actually see him now finishing off, adding another tech lab onto one of the star ports, and the battle cruiser production wow. continues. He technically doubled it. He will intercept some SCVs here. At this point, though, if you were Thorazane, you'd just be killing these off by yourself anyway. It does look like, though, Tasia wants to hang on to them for now. The Infestors want to try and fungal. They do fungal on the Ravens, not getting all the Ravens, though, and the Brood. Oh, no, on the Banelings, excuse me. Able to kill off all the Banelings with that Seeker Missile. All of a sudden, this army is looking mighty weak. Although the huge Whoa. Fungals, oh, my God, the Ultralists, they are hungry, hungry Ultras. 18 kills, 5 kills, 3 kills as well. Cleans up that army, and he actually has a supply lead. Forget eating those apples or pearls or whatever they are in that game. They will eat Marines yes. for lunch. And here they go, moving up the ramp. Now starting to slam through a couple of those Supply Depots. And the Sheth carnage continues. Now he has to be very careful with these Infestors. He wants to use all that energy as quickly oh. as he can. The Battle Cruiser is indeed operational. He has no anti-air here, just a couple of Infested Terrans. But uh, you want to be killing out these depots as best you can. Sheth might actually benefit from retreating with these Ultras, but he does decide to press on. Um, it, one thing that's interesting about this game, Rob, is how the supplies keep flip-flopping on who's actually in the lead. Oh, wow. Now we actually see a bit of kiting there. Whoa! Sheth moves in with all of his investors directly under all of the Ravens and loses every single one of them after only being able to make two infested Terrans. And now the Battle Cruiser count has doubled to a whopping two. Yes, and that's more Battle Cruisers than you usually see in an entire tournament. The expansion did take a little bit of damage here. Workers killed overall is 30 by Sheth. But, uh, you know, honestly, I think he wasn't in that bad of shape until he wasted all of those Infestors. That was absolutely a misclick. He didn't realize those Infestors were going in that direction, and that is what is going to cost him all of those very valuable Spellcasters. And at this point, I mean, what does Sheth have in response to Re... Or, uh, not Reaver, those... Those haven't been around for a while. The Raven, <laughs> Battlecruiser... Reaver in a ZVT. That would be... I'd, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> it, it, like, it like Nero parasites it from Brood War. From and a just different brings game, it. pulls it in. Oh, if only, Rob. If only, but nice fungal there on that army. But battle cruisers have so much HP that you cannot kill them with fungals. 
what, how many would you, you would need? Like 15? Here seven, you go. Like Here seven, you go doing math seven, again. A very high amount of fungals. <laughs> One oh, fungal man. does go down on the Ravens. And uh, the Ravens, they do have quite a bit of energy. They can do the Seeker Missile. And this is a very, a very sad way for Sheth to go out of this game because, you know, those Infestors could have still done so much damage. We do see an attack at the bottom right. Even if he kills this, it's almost not even cost effective because there's no workers here for him to kill. He does manage to kill that command center, but he's trading two of his own bases for one. Man, and uh, Sheth's in a really rough spot here. We see that supply count has just been suffering quite a bit. We also have a bit of a melee down in the lower right-hand corner of the map. Those Ultralists are trying to take down this group of infantry units, but they are just far too outnumbered. I, I feel like, unfortunately for Sheth, everything is outnumbered as he does not have that much supply. His army is looking pretty measly. His worker count is pretty good, but uh, he's not really finding that many bases to mine on. He's mining on this right side base. These drones did not get the memo that the hatchery is indeed having its grand opening. But at this point, I think Tasia may be able to move in here, may be able to end this game. But what a very interesting game, number one. While it took three times to start it, we got battle cruisers out of it. So I am absolutely OK with this. Completely worth the wait. Tasia showing us, hey, guys. I know, I know that that may have been a little frustrating, but man, I'm going to make so many auto turrets <laughs> and use battle cruises, getting in there and really just showing, hey, come on, let's let's go to the next game. Yeah, no, this game's absolutely yeah. over. There's nothing yep. left for Sheth to do. There is going to be the GG out of Sheth. Now Sheth is one game away, one excuse me, one game away from being eliminated in this tournament, and he's a great manor bear. I absolutely love him, but we'll have to see if he can. Pull it together, start winning some games, and get himself back into this tournament. So this means that he is going to be able to pick the next map. That now, is true. Not sure what exactly the bands were. He was actually looking very strong there, as we yeah. saw on the third try of game number one. And the thing about Sheth is, I mean, he's a really strong player. Of course, he's on a professional team. But sometimes there's going to be those minor mistakes, like one misclick on your Infestors. All of a sudden, you've lost, oh, what right. was it, well, five six, or six Infestors, yeah, something. something like that. Some and those Infestors now. could have been useful for harassing the expansions, for falling back, delaying the push from coming. Right. And it, it could have made this game look very, very differently. I don't know how he was going to deal with those battle cruisers because that just seems frustrating. I mean, infest yeah, like infested Terrans aren't terribly good at that either. Nah, I mean, the corruptors are okay, but then you have the point to Finn's drone, and since he was behind at that point, I mean, he can't make enough of what you need to actually uh, end that game. So, unfortunately for Sheth, he is one game away from being eliminated, but of course, every single player at least gets $500 at this tournament, so you're guaranteed money just for attending. Well, in addition to like, you got they got the trip, they're staying at a really cool hotel. The hotel is actually awesome. Like I know, I know for a player, maybe that's not the coolest thing, but the W is like an awesome hotel. Like this this place is pretty sweet. And the, also the uh, the player booths and everything that they have set up here, they get their own food, they get their own bathrooms. Well, so, I mean, the venue, like we talked about, like this is a rock star venue. We're in Austin, Texas, right. which happens to be the live music capital of the world, as you may or may not have heard in one of those teasers I that heard I that played. As, like, and, I heard that when I got here, they're like, welcome to the live music center of the world. I'm like, I can't cool. even name like three bands. So, I mean, <laughs> that is definitely lost on me because I am all about esports. It does look like they have picked Metropolis. That's right. So that means that Chef picked it going into this game. Oh, both of those players are ready to go. But let's talk a little bit about Metropolis. Mm. How, how does that work? All of them are less than 50%. I, I'm guessing because of the oh, mirror matchups? Oh, because the maybe. advantage is just on the other side. So if you had said, like, ZVT, PVZ, or TVP, then it would look the other way. So we are that so smart. makes sense. This shows you how bad I am at math. I'm like, <laughs> how does these percentages add like, up? Like, they don't add... They, uh, that only adds up yeah, to, like, 150%. Yeah.